Hello, we are here for More Happier, a podcast where we get more happier. Hey, Elizabeth. Hi, Grouch. Hey, so I'm so excited we're going to be seeing each other in person soon in Kansas City. I know. I can't wait. I'm already making my list of restaurants I want to go to. Winstead's, of course, being at the top of that list. Oh, my gosh. I cannot wait for Winstead's. The last time I was there, I took a menu. I decided I had to have Um, one as a souvenir. Oh, maybe you can take one for me this time. Right. I I don't think they mind very much. They they have a lot of them lying around. So today we will talk about the value of old friends and reflect on the value of the mall. Mm. But first, Elizabeth, what is something making you more happier? So speaking of old friends, Gretchen, uh, something making me more happier is that I have an old friend who just moved back to Los Angeles. My friend Todd, who I went to high school with, Yes. his parents were my teachers in fact and oh, I had for- I forgot that yes um, they're both yeah. history teachers and Sarah and Todd and I ran our high school newspaper together so he was part of that and Sarah and I always talk about how we when we moved here we had one friend who happened to be an agent and he helped us get an agent well that was Todd then he moved yeah. to London for years and years and years and years And now he's back and I saw him the other day and it just made me realize like it's what they say. There's just nothing like an old friend who you knew when you were a kid. Yeah. Who knows your family, you know, their family. Yeah. Even though I work with Sarah, who is a friend from high school, you would think I would, you know, and I still talk to all my friends from high school. The older I get, it's like the more I appreciate them, like the more close I feel to those people. I don't, do you feel that way? I 100% feel that way. I know exactly what you mean. And like, I think, I think I was telling you how when I got together with a bunch of my friends and like we spent hours catching each other up because we wanted to hear about their mother, their father, their three sisters, their brother, what happened to their dog. Like we yeah. care, we knew their whole families. Like what, what was going on with their house in the Ozarks? I remember some people's phone numbers. Oh, I me mean, too. Yes. You, when I go to Kansas City, I like will often go out of my way to go by their house and just yeah. look at their old house. We just have these deep, deep roots. What's funny, there's that whole, there's like a proverb, um, make new friends, but keep the old. The one is silver, the other is gold. Yes. And you can never replace it. You can make yes. new friends, but you can't make old friends. Yes. And so having Todd back, it's, it's just a little more feeling of home because that's someone yeah. from home in the city. So it's really nice. I mean, I was excited he was coming back, but now that he's here, I just feel a little like comfort level boost. Well, it was funny because when I remember when you moved to LA, like it was a big deal that he was there. Yeah. Well, yes, it was essential. He was your foothold. (laughs) Yes. But do you remember, I don't even know if you remember, I can't think of the name of like the hill that the newspaper office was on, but didn't you and Sarah, when you were first dreaming, like one day we'll have a production company, weren't you going to name it after like the building that the Kingman newspaper House. was in? Or there was... Yes. 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 We were going to name it Kingman House. We ended up naming it Fun Job. Oh, yes, which is much better. But I, yes, that, I do remember exactly that. Yes, right. Kingman House was the name of where we did the newspaper, The Voice. Yeah. So that's making me happier. What's making you happier? Well, I have to say the summer's fun. We talk about the summer, but I am a creature of habit and I like being back in routine like you come back from labor day like eleanor's back in school it just calms me to have everything be more in my habitual state and you know and i'm traveling and i've got all this so it's not like every day is the same which of course you know is my dream is that every day would be the same Hmm. i know i like that back to i like being on that fall schedule and feeling like okay in in our family like we don't watch tv on weeknights usually Mm. And, you know, Eleanor gets up early to go to school. I don't know. It just feels different. And I, I kind of like that feeling. So I'm I'm excited about that. Good. You know, it's funny. I was dreading the start of school. Um, but now that yeah. it's here, I'm really enjoying it. So I'm kind of with you there. Yeah. You kind of get into the swing of it. I don't know. But here's something funny, Alyssa, I wanted to tell you. Okay. So remember how I was talking about how excited I was because I, I'd used Find My AirPods and I found my AirPods that way? Yes. So, right. It's like checkoffs, AirPods. Something's going to go wrong uh-huh. with the AirPods. So, I mean, I hadn't actually lost my AirPods, like meaning actually lost them right. since I got them. I would lose them in the apartment, but I wouldn't actually lose them. 
So the minute I turned on Find My, of course, I think they must have like fallen out of my pocket when I was like getting out of a taxi or like oh, no. getting out of the subway or something. But so I was looking on my Find My and they're like, they're in Sheep's Head Bay in Brooklyn. They're like moving around in Brooklyn. Oh my I feel like gosh. Somebody found my AirPods and they're off having their own little adventures oh, that's uh, in funny. Brooklyn. Oh. And I could see them moving. <laughs> and it's funny because, well, first of all, it's kind of like I know that they're actually gone. So I'm not frantically looking for them. So that's good. But it is kind of weird and I said to Eleanor, well, I, I just have to decide, like, maybe it really made someone's day mm -hmm. that they found this pair of AirPods. And she was like, well, that's a very nice way to look at it. And I yes. thought, oh, I'm so advanced. Well, I remember the idea that AirPods sacrifice themselves to another person so that you didn't get hit by a truck. That's right. No, that's a really good way to think about it. Yeah, I know. But I do miss them. I yeah. put like my little stickers on them so they felt very personalized. Yes. But uh but it did make me happy that I knew I knew what happened yes. to them. Yes. Not a nagging feeling that you're going to find them. So at least now yeah, you can exactly. get another pair and, and I not can move think on. that you're going to yes. end up with two pair. Yeah, it's just that the timing of it was yes. funny. It was like 3 days later. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> Okay, Gretch, coming up, we are going to talk about malls, but first, this break. Okay, Gretchen, there's something you've been meaning to tell me. Okay, so I was listening to a podcast that I really like called Dakota Ring, and this was the July 26, 2022 episode, and the host, Willa Paskin, made a very funny observation. So the, the, the title of the episode is, The Mall is Dead, Long Live the Mall. And she said, there are two kinds of Americans in the world, those who have had a mall in their life and those who haven't. Mm. And that was just, that was funny for me because I was just starting to think about like, do I have a mall in my life? I don't have a mall in my life right now because we have malls in New York City, but it's like, I don't go to the mall. But growing up, of course, going to Word Parkway Mall, I mean we would definitely go to the mall. Yes. Well, and I counted, we had Seville Square on the plaza, which I count as a mall of sorts. Well, that's interesting. That's it. It's it's a very, it's like a small, very uh, vertical mall. Yes. It didn't have like a central atrium, which I think of like, oh, is the central atrium necessary for something to be oh, a mall? Or does it need a food a court in order to have be a mall? Yeah. Because it had a McDonald's, but yes. it did not have a food court. It did not have a food court and it did not have an atrium, but it had an assortment of unrelated stores that you could yes. stroll through. Well, okay. it's like yeah. you could be dropped off there. That's how I define them all. Can oh, you yeah. be dropped off yes. there? <laughs> and you'd go to a movie and yes. you'd go, go, they had a bookstore, they had a uh, record store. There was, an, oh, there was that, um, uh, what do you call it? A crepe store. Remember the crepery? Yes. There was also an esprit there. The Esprit store. Oh my gosh, Esprit. I forgot about Esprit. <laughs> yeah, and there was like a tennis shoe store. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. It was like lots of stuff. Yeah. But grownups would go there too. It yes. wasn't just for kids. Yeah. But there's the indoor mall, Gretchen, and there's the outdoor mall. Of course, in yeah. LA, we have both. We have lots of indoor yeah. malls, but we also have some amazing outdoor malls. So malls are more a part of my life now than they have ever been. You've got a lot of malls that you go to. Yes. And you know, Adam loves malls. He, most people do not love malls or don't espouse that they love malls. But one of the first <laughs> things I knew about Adam is that he loves going to the mall and walking around. That's a way he calms himself. So Adam loves a mall. I love a mall. I, I love a mall. You do? Well, yeah. And re I remember when we were doing our live tour, what was that wall? Remember it was before Christmas and I got that hilarious picture of you sitting next to the polar bear. You remember that? Were, were we in, was that Atlanta? Yes. Remember? Atlanta had a beautiful mall. Yes. Right. And it was right by our hotel. Yes. It might've been attached to our hotel. Yes. Yeah. It was attached <laughs> so, to the hotel. Yeah. And it had great, like, because some, some malls have like really cool decorations. I don't know. That's like, a, so I go to the Met every single day. Like I could definitely go to a mall every day because it's just these subtle differences. It's just like, what are they doing? How is it changing? What's the same? What's the air like? What are people doing? I don't know. There's just, I, I, well, and the other thing is malls are really a rite of passage, which I never thought about until yes. Jack turning 12. Now he's not here yet, but many of his classmates are at the phase of life where they're being dropped off in groups, girls and boys at the mall. And then they're running around the mall 
doing whatever and eating and hanging out and then they get picked up, right? So that is a very much of a rite of passage as you grow up. It's like your first freedom is to be able to yes. be at the mall without parents. Right. right. And so it's really so you get dropped off and picked up. Yes. So it's funny. I mean, yeah. So it means right. more steps. than just like stores. You know, malls are sort of yeah. well in, in movies, malls play such a huge part of like teens gathering and working yeah. at the mall. I mean As a teenager, working at the mall is a major sort of uh, movie staple. But this is the thing, like now so many malls aren't doing well. And so the big question is some of them are just dying. Some of them are being converted into office space or whatever. But yeah, you think people need a place to go and walk around. Like this is a whole field of study, which is this, where are these places that people can gather and be outside of their homes? Yeah. 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 Outside of their home and outside of their workplace. Yeah. 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 It's interesting. But it, but it is funny, like I was thinking this would be a good question. I don't know how you get there. It's a little bit of a non sequitur, but I'm always thinking like if you're stuck with somebody like a conversational partner and you don't know what to talk about, this would actually be a really good insight into mm, their life, which is yeah. like, have you had a mall in your life and how do you feel about malls? It's a know yourself better question. Right. Because also I think people do associate them with like materialism or like greediness but it's really, there's a lot more going on, I think. I mean, yes. it's interesting. Gretch, we can't talk about malls without me mentioning the Real Housewives of Dubai. You can I, ski you, in the mall in Dubai. Yes. Yeah, and I think there's a mall in the United States where you can ride a roller coaster. Yes, I believe that's the Mall of America in Minnesota. Uh, and then Gretchen, uh, um, a book we both love, The Passage by yes. Justin Cronin, The one, the chosen one is found under a Ferris wheel in a mall. That's right. That's right. So right. Ooh, meaningful. Nice literary tie in. People criticize malls for many things, you know, many have deserved, but it is, it's a, it's a fascinating thing to think about and talk about. Still part of my life. Yeah. Okay, Gretch, now it is time for a spotlight on a tool. Yeah. So this is, you know, we talk about any tool for something that we think can make us happier. And Elizabeth, I have to say like, this is a tool that you and I will never use. We will, we will never use it or our kids will not need it. We will not need it. We will not use it. I don't even really understand it. I vaguely get it. But my high intensity weight training instructor was so excited about it that I was like, for the people for whom this is a useful tool, they will be really excited. So this is a tool called Ballpark DJ. Okay. And what it does is it let I may not be getting it exactly correct, but it's like, I guess if you're announcing the players, It lets you do like a professional thing where there's like music and they do their walk on music and they can each pick their walk on song and then you can have it. And I don't even know what the lingo is like coming up, Mm -hmm. you know, it's Elizabeth Craft and, you know, you do that whole thing and you can record yourself doing it or you can pay more and they will have like professional announcers doing the voice. And so it's funny because he was talking about it in youth sports. And when I looked it up in the app store, it's all about youth sports. But I was thinking, could you use this for like the debate team? It seems like any time where like people are like being announced and coming out. But anyway, it says in kind of in the description, Ballpark DJ was designed by a father and coach who struggled for years to find an audio app that combined music and voice for walk up introductions for baseball and other youth athletic events. But anyway, Mike was just like, this thing was so fun. It was so easy. You do pay for this app, but I think it's, there's a lot of bells and whistles that you can pay more for. But if you're just using the basic thing, I think it's, it's very reasonable. But anyway, so if you're the kind of person for whom that is useful, you will find it useful (laughs) and we will not. (laughs) Ballpark DJ. I love the name. Yes. All right, Gretch, I mentioned The Real Housewives of Dubai earlier. Well, coming up, I have a lesson from The Real Housewives. But first, we're going to take a break. So, Elizabeth, I feel like I can quote an episode of The Office to cover any occasion. Like, I can always provide an apt illusion. Yes, you can. And I feel like for you, it's like The Real Housewives. There's just, there's like no situation that you cannot tie into some part of the Real Housewives franchise. Yes. So what have you got this time? (laughs) Well, this is a lesson from the Real Housewives from all franchises, which is about what we call girls trips, which granted Mm. are women, but we call them girls trips. Okay. That's the technical term. Yeah. Technical term is girls trip. And, you know, the Real Housewives love a good girls trip. 
And I think they've really pushed that into the culture, the idea that it's normal and desirable for women to go off on their own for little trips. And yeah. I am a huge fan of this, Gretchen. I think everybody should take girls trips. Mm. I think they're just so restorative. They're so much fun. It's like, I can't imagine my life without girls trips. And I love that the house, I love watching the housewives take theirs as well. And what, what, what do you think makes it so much more fun than just like spending the day with, with your right. friends? Well, I think it's because the hours of uninterrupted time. So it's like the the yeah. reason college yeah. is so great, right? Is because you get to, you meet your friends and then you're with them like 15 yes. hours a day for four Non-stop. years. Non-stop. Yeah. And it is the best, right? right? I miss it yeah. so much. Yeah. And when you're on a girl's trip, you get to be with your girlfriends, like just this like vast amounts of time where you can just hang yeah. out and talk. Yeah. And it's not like, oh, we're having dinner. We're on a two hour clock or, yeah. oh, we're at someone's house. We're on a four hour clock. And it just, there's no way of like getting to know people. That's the same as just spending time. Yeah. So it's just yeah. bonding time. You really can have those kind of long, lazy conversations where you really hear yeah. about someone's family, like you were mentioning earlier. Yeah. And then it's a break from the everyday. I mean, I think it's, you know, we talk about it's always good to shake it up. Yeah. And it's a great way to just shake it up. And on the other side, there's nothing wrong with the people left at home to have their own bonding time. Right. Yeah, Adam right. loves it when I go away on a girl's trip because he loves having Jack all to himself. <laughs> well, it's funny with every with every person who's part of a group or leaves a group, it changes the dynamic. And sometimes you're like, I love when you're here, but it's also interesting when you're gone. Yeah. And do you think it's kind of like, it kind of reminds me of like a sleepover yes. or a slumber party that also kind of changed the nature of friendship because it is, it's just, yes. it's just time changes when, when there's so much more of it. Yes. I mean, Gretchen, I am someone who had or went to a slumber party literally every single weekend for like three years, yeah. seventh, yeah. eighth, ninth grade, sixth, yeah. seventh, eighth, something like that. So I've always been a slumber party fan. And one thing is, speaking of the slumber party of it, I've been both where I've shared a room with three other women. And so mm -hmm. there have been four of us, you know, in, in yeah. two queen beds, or I've gone and had my own room. And both have their advantages right. and disadvantages. You know, well, I'm very social, so I like sharing a room. Yeah, yeah. But I do remember when we, speaking of going, uh, when we did our live tour, I think it was one of the Satellite Sisters, I don't remember which sister it was, was like, if you're going on a tour, get your own hotel yes. room because you're going to be spending so much time together. And we thought that was good advice. Yeah. But when we're in Kansas City, I mean, I think Adam and Jamie are a little mystified. Like, at least for me, I'm like adamant. I'm like, there is no way we are not staying under the roof of my parents. Like, yes. we're not, that is just a total not a conversation yes. because what it's like when you're just there is so different from when you're coming and going. And yes. I think it's the same thing that it's like this endless uninterrupted presence just changes the nature of time. It's like the two hours drinking coffee in your robe. That's like the best yes. part of, of whether yes. it be being at home or a girl's trip. Yeah. And so you don't get that if you're not staying there. And in fact, it's a big thing on The Real Housewives. If one of the women chooses to like stay at a hotel in town yeah. or something oh, yeah. instead of like in the house they've rented, it's very mm -hmm. controversial. So <laughs> this does come up as everything does on The Housewives. As, yeah, 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 yeah. But I want to challenge yeah, everybody to go on a girl's trip. And it can be literally something as simple as staying overnight at the Marriott Courtyard. You know what I mean? In your town. Like, it doesn't even have to be like a trip. It's just right. really making that time to spend with your friends. Right, right. Or staying in someone's house. Yeah, or staying in someone's house. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. 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 I think it's great. I would like my book club did a book club sleepover. What was funny was we did this thing and all of our children were really excited for us. Like they were all really Aww. enchanted by the idea that all of the moms were going to, you know, all these book clubs, they were going to go. It was like, Ooh, what are you going to do? 
the, it's hard. The scheduling is hard. I scheduling feel like that's the thing. Is very the difficult. scheduling is hard. Yes. We've never been able to do it because we want it to be like at least most of us, and we haven't been able to figure out how to do the time. But you just have to persist. Well, that's the thing. and Gretchen, you, to... you do this with your high school friends every other yes. year, and I am trying to yeah. get this started with my high school friends, mentioning again my love of high school friends. Yeah. Because I just want to go back to having all that time with them. Yeah. It's kind of like what I say about the Met. It changes an experience when you have different kinds of time. And again, like, because I go to the Met every day, like, it doesn't matter what I do on any particular day. I don't have to be efficient or productive or targeted. And it does. So I, I think it is, I mean, it's just hard because sometimes you just want more time and mm -hmm. time, there's so many, there's so many demands on our time, but it's definitely something to think about. Anyway, I guess we'll call our trip to Kansas City, our girls trip to Kansas City. <laughs> Not exactly our sister what I adventure. think of as a girls trip, but we'll call it a girls trip. Yes. I Well, let's call it a sisterly adventure okay. because to me, that's a special category. Okay. It's sisterly like, adventure. I, that's like a KC. category in my mind. Which is, are we having sisterly yeah. adventures? Okay, so, good. It's not very adventurous to go to Kansas City, but I guess it's a kind of adventure. Yes. Okay, Gretchen, what is our quotation for the week? Okay, now listen, I picked this with one in you in mind because I know you're reading Anne Patchett's essay. And I couldn't remember, are you reading This is the Story of a Happy Marriage? Yes. Or are you re okay, so this comes from the essay Do Not Disturb in that book, in that collection. And uh, she writes, oh, and it's very appropriate because we're talking, it's all about vacation. Oh, good. So extremely apt. What we want out of a vacation changes as we age. It changes from vacation to vacation. There was a time when it was all about culture for me. My idea of a real break was to stay in museums until my legs ached and then go stand in line to get tickets for an opera or a play. Later, I became a disciple of relaxation and looked for words like beach and massage when making my plans. I found those little paper umbrellas that balanced on the side of rum drinks to be deeply charming then. Now I strive for a transcendent invisibility and the chance to accomplish things that I can't get done at home. But as I pack up my room at the Hotel Bel Air, I think the best vacation is the one that relieves me of my own life for a while and then makes me long for it again. Nice. Yeah. So, Lisa, are you feeling more happier? I, just happier? I am. The, the debate continues. I am feeling more happier, definitely. Thank you, Chuck. And everyone get in touch. Gretchen's on Twitter at Gretchen Rubin. I'm at Elizabeth Craft, and our email address is podcast at GretchenRubin.com. For everything related to this episode, links, photos, and more, go to happiercast.com. Bye, Gretch. Bye, Elizabeth. The best time to start a happiness project is 20 years ago. The second best time is now. So, Alyssa, because I, I know you love the cicadas in Kansas City in August so much, but I don't know if they're still going to be going when we're there in September. Mm. Do you, how I think late, it depends how on the go? weather, right? If, it, yeah, right? if it's a long yeah. summer, they'll still be going? Oh, I hope so. I know. You got, I never noticed how much I love them, and now when I, when I hear them, I'm like, it makes me think of you. I love them. Thanks for watching us here on YouTube. If you like the show, please hit subscribe below the video. It really helps other people to discover the show. from the Onward Project.